Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, I can see we've got people um, joining us already. So good morning, Angie, Julie, Debbie. Um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for everybody for joining me for this. And thank you so much for Search Press for inviting me to be part of their Christmas festival. So a uh, wonderful idea because a lot of us aren't able to get out you know, and uh, the shows that we would normally meet at and chat at and I would demonstrate at have sort of gone by the wayside in the short term. So it's nice to um, have the opportunity to come and see some new faces. Um, and I have been working um, all the way through, keeping very busy. Um, and I've come up with a brand new design just for this event. So let me show you what I'm actually going to be demonstrating to you. Oh, we've got a little bit of Always a sneaky bit of uh, stray cotton that gets on here, especially when you're working in black. But I have created this uh, lovely bauble cushion for you all. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, we're going to work through. Now, I've done it as a cushion. The technique, hi Pauline, the technique is really simple um, and it's a really sort of fun design, but you can play with this. So you could make it like I have into a cushion of any size because we don't need to worry about things matching up, which is a joy um, when you're doing, you want to do something sort of fast. Uh, you can, as I said, you can make it into a cushion like I have, or this could be, you could do a, a lot of them in a row. You could do the smaller, you could do placemats, you could do table runner with a whole load of these baubles just in the center with a border around it. You could have flying geese around the edge. You could do sashing and have individual blocks and make a whole quilt. Um, I've seen as well um, real life baubles that have people's photos in the middle. So you could actually take some photographs, print them onto um, printable fabric and place those in the middle. And then you've got almost uh, personalised um, baubles for your cushion or your tree. Uh, the other thing, it could be a panel centre, but we're going to do it as a cushion here because it's a, it's a good technique to actually get to grips with it. So I'm just going to move that out of the way and then the technique itself you will find inside my book okay so this is Sarah Payne's quilt school um, and if we go to page 90 in here you will see the technique that we are going to be doing today which is dealing with circles now I'm a great believer in making things as simple and easy as possible and that's what the whole book is about it's about demystifying quilting but it's also about um, I've, I've heard from a lot of people who are established quilters who said you know I never knew that so it's a good one to look at so let's get cracking with our demonstration oh I can see lots of comments so excuse me I'm just I'm just getting my mouse here you can just see I'm just scrolling through because loads more comments have came, come up while I was talking so um let's just have a quick who've got so Pauline I said hello Rosemary Sue Pat Julie Sharon Ali pa um another Pat <laughs> Uh, Jeanette says, good afternoon, been stuck inside for so long, you're such a tonic, love to all. Thank you, Jeanette, I appreciate that. Uh, Sue, uh, thank you, lots of people saying lovely design. Debbie Bronze, Bransgrove, hello. Sue Matthews, and um, I can see that Monica is on there as well. Hello, Monica, thank you for inviting me, really, because that's exactly what happened. And I've got Gemma there as well, so, uh, and Linda and Jackie. So anyway, let's have a look at the supplies that we're gonna need. First of all, I've got my cushion back, all right? Well, the background for my cushion. This is um, a piece of um, black fabric. Now, you can work to whatever size you want your cushion front to be. I've got a 16 inch cushion pad, so I've cut this to 16 inches. What I'll actually do is trim this down and add a narrow border to it. Now, the way I like my cushions to look is I like my cushions, I don't want them to be too like floppy. I like them to fit quite well. So what I do is I make the front the exact same size as the cushion pad. All right, so when I've sewn it together, it's going to be slightly smaller, uh, which means it's going to do that just a tad. So it's just a nice snug fit. And the joy of cushion pads as well, I have to say, and cushions, is you can change the look of a room in seconds just by changing your cushion covers. So I could, I've got about, I've got two sofas, 
two sort of shorter sofas and I must have about 15 cushions on both of them. So I could just change all my cushion covers before I've put my tree up and my room looks festive. And you could have lots of different designs of just use, plough through your scraps. So I've got a background here. Now this one that I made here, there is no interfacing on the inside of my cushion front. It's just the fabric because um, I don't need to worry about puckering too much because I've actually interfaced these. And I'll come back to that um, in a little while. But uh, what I've got with this one is I thought, you know what, it would be quite fun to see what it looks like if I applique down with wadding and my walking foot. So what I've got here is I've got some polyester. This is actually the Viseline R80, just a scrap of it. And I have used uh, 505 spray just to tack it down. You could pin it as well. So that's my background. Then underneath that, I have got my scraps of fabric for making my baubles. So I'm also using here, because I happen to have a lot of this interface left over. Um, uh, Linda, thank you very much. She says, love your book. <laughs> Always using it to check things. Well, thank you very much. Um, what I've got here is this is the quick screen triangle, again by Viseline, and it's a sew-in interface. Now, um, I just happen to have this one, so that's what I'm going to be using. You can use light or medium weight sew-in. Make sure it's sew-in rather than iron-on because you'll end up in a little, um, a little bit of a mess. Um, uh, if you use if you use a, an iron on one now these lines won't show uh, because of the way we're going to put it together but what it does mean is that it's going to turn all those edges in so we're not left with any raw edges then you can wash this tons of times and it's going to be fine but if you haven't got any interface I've also used old pillowcases or muslin or any scraps of fabric because it's not going to be seen it just helps us along with the technique and then I have some fabric scraps so I'm going to need one for my bauble and then I'm going to need uh, one for the top of the bauble OK, I have pre prepped because we only have, you know, 50 minutes left before the next event starts. So um, I have kind of got got a few ready. So here's one that I've done earlier. So I have prepped my circle and I have made the little top because, you know, a bobbin, a, a bauble needs to have a little catch on the top. So I have prepped one. But I'm going to show you from start to finish on this one so that one there is my largest one now I've cut this when we're doing this I've done this at six inches this one I'm going to do at four inches I happen to have a circular ruler here which is incredibly useful for this technique but when I did the first one I didn't have my ruler handy so I used I think that might be a sellotape I think that's it that's a cake plate and I think that's a teacup <laughs> so anything circular you know it's all about having fun and playing around with it and you don't actually need to do anything complicated or have any complicated tools I just happen to be using a circular ruler here because it's easy and I have one to hand and I'm also using a wash away pen again because I have one to hand we can mark this with a with um a by row with a pencil anything like that okay so I'm going to do my next one uh, my first one's at six the smaller one is at three so I'm going to do this about five inches okay so this triangle happens to have lines marked on it which give me a lovely center line um, so I'm going to do it the other way up so that I'm, I'm wasting as little pos as possible. So there's my five inch line. So I'm going to line up the line on my ruler with the line on my quick screen and just draw half a, half a circle on there. I'm going to turn around and match it up the other side. And there we go, we've marked our triangle, uh, our circle. So here we go. All right, now it just needs to be, it just needs to be marked somehow so we can use pencil or whatever we like. So then I've got my fabric here. And what I want to do is I need my fabric. This, you can see I've got different sides of it. So this is grey on the front 
and then obviously it's lighter on the back. Now I need that facing upwards and I'm going to put my triangle piece or my circle. That's going to get confusing, isn't it? That's going to get very confusing very quickly. So let's just pin that in place. Uh, let me grab a couple of pins over here. Oh, apologies. It's always a bit disconcerting when somebody bumps the camera, isn't it? So there we go. We've got this pinned in place. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sew um, all the way around this circle through these layers. Now, if you've done this in pencil or pen, you don't want that to show on the very edge of your um, design when you sew it together. So what I do is I will use a portion of my foot, I will line it up and I will actually use that as a guide. I'll put the edge of my foot along here and I'll sew about there and that'll make a bit more sense. So I'll be sewing sort of like that. All right, now that'll make a bit more sense once we bring the sewing machine in. Now, I do have my walking foot on my sewing machine at the moment. Let's bring you in a little bit. Now the reason for that is um, I've set it up ready to sew these in situ on the uh, backing and I've got wadding. But you don't need to use a walking foot if you don't want to. It's really, it's really optional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my stitch to a stitch that gives me my needle in the middle all right, and I've got my walking foot on here because you don't have to just use your walking foot for um, for sewing, uh, quilting. I use it for dressmaking and all sorts of things like that. So I'm just going to try to give you a lovely shot of the sewing machine. There we go. So now I've got the edge of this part of the foot here is going to run around that drawn line. All right, and I've got white thread in here, so it does make it a little tricky for you to see my stitch line but I don't want anything to show. So remember, I've got my bauble fabric face upwards, and then I've got this triangle on top. Now, if, you've got, if you're going with, say, a plain white fabric, I would make sure that the, the interface I'm using, like this one, is a plain one. But um, I've been playing around with all the Christmas fabrics I've got, and this has got lines marked on it, um, but they don't show through. So just think about that. What you need to do is before you sew it all together, is just put them so you know and have a look and see if you can see those, see if you can see those lines through your fabric. But as I said, with these Christmas fabrics, because they're quite patterned, um, there's no worry about seeing anything through them. Right. So here we go, here's my first circle. And I'm just coming back to the beginning. All right, trim that off. Take those pins out. And now I'm going to get in here with my scissors and I'm going to cut roughly. Again, if you're working with a very fine thread, uh, sorry, very fine fabric, you need to be a bit more accurate than this. But these are quite colourful, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned. So I'm going to cut to between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. Now, the reason you would need to be concerned normally is because um, you might see a little bit of that in the seam allowance. So let me just quickly you can take longer to do this but I want to so you see I'm not even being particularly round about this right so I'm going to put that to one side and just very quickly do the other one because then we can move the sewing machine out of the way for a bit so this one you can see I've written three in the middle that's just to remind me that I'm doing a three inch square uh, sorry three inch circle Circles, triangles, squares, my goodness. So I'm just using that drawn line as my guide for the edge of my foot. All the way around. Oh, 
All right, so there's my next one. And you can see I've got my fabrics right sides together. There have been occasions where I've sewn it together and then realized that I've not put them right sides together. And that's really annoying because then you have to unpick it. Right, so let's prep these two circles then. So next I'm cutting around this one. All right. Ooh. And as I said, I'm not being too precious because these are bold fabrics, so they're not going to be seen inside. The next thing I need to do is snip into my seam allowance. So, oh, Sally says, really enjoying these demos. It's been fabulous. Thank you. That's nice. Right. So what I tend to do is like I've done here, just a little snip, probably easier to see on a slightly bigger one. Put a little snip into the seam allowance because then I can tell at a glance how far I've got round when I'm snipping. All right, so I've got my little pair of scissors here and I'm going to snip in. It's a good idea to do this with little scissors like this and ones that are sharp to the tip. And this is quite a small circle, so I'm, I'm snipping sort of every eighth of an inch. Now you can do the same thing with pinking shears. You can sew up, uh, sorry, you can, you can trim very close to your seam allowance with your pinking shears and this will do the same thing. This is because if we don't do this, when we turn this through, which we're going to do in, in a moment so that this fabric is right side out, this will stay straight because there will be no give inside the circle. So snipping it like this means when we turn it through, it can do that. All right, it can open up quite nicely. So oh, if you do accidentally cut through your stitching, don't worry, just go back onto the sewing machine and stitch around it again. Jenny says, loving the flamingo scissors. Yes, I have to say they are a definite favourite of mine as well. Aren't they gorgeous? Bright and colourful and cheery. So how far did I get? And perfect for this job because they snip to the end. I have just bought myself a nice pair of stalk scissors as well, I think. If we're going to have tools, let's make them gorgeous. So I know I've got all the way around that one, and then I'm just going to do the same with this one. So you want to get sort of within a thread's width of those stitches. But as I said, if you do accidentally cut through them, you'll soon know when you turn it out. And if you don't cut far enough, you'll also know, because when you are looking... Um, at it from the top you'll have straight bits you'll have more of a hexagon than a circle hi Janet um, Janet's asking if I'm well yes I am thank you I think that's because I, I had an early morning this morning I was on uh, doing my my other job on a tv channel um, for 6 45 this morning so getting up at four <laughs> but you know what they say, when you love your job, you don't do a day's work in your life. And that's true, except at 4am on a Sunday. Right, so coming all the way around. Nearly there. Right, and now we're back. Also, when I do this, I tend to work from the bigger side down. Um, the bigger size, sorry, down, because we're going to cut out this middle and the middle from here would actually be about the right size to do the backing for that so we can keep reusing. So now what I'm going to do is pull the two apart and I'm going to cut about an inch from the edge, all right, from our sewn line and just go round and cut that piece out. So here we go. Oh. All right, so cutting, cutting, cutting. And you see that would then be big enough for me to, or just about big enough for me to do a smaller bauble if I wanted to. Just draw another circle on it and use that. And then this is the magic, you see. What we do is we then turn it through like this. And you can use your thumbnail or you can use a pointer and presser. 
but we're just going to push into that seam. Now you can see why for a start I wanted to ensure that I stitched away from that blue line because I don't want that blue line sitting on the very edge of my stitching. Also, um, you can't see any of the interface on the edge there, which is which is quite important too. So just push this round. And this is where you will find out whether you have not snipped enough. So we will be giving this a press in a second, but there we go. So we have our circle with all our edges folded in and everything super, super neat. So let's do the same with the other one. We pull the two pieces apart because you don't want to cut through this. You'll end up with a hole. And then we're just going to trim. Now you can be sort of, uh, you can trim to less than um, an inch if you want to. And again, this is often driven by, and how neat you need to be is driven by how thin your fabric on that side is and how sort of light, because you can sometimes see a seam allowance through a light fabric. But if you cut it too close, it actually starts to rise out and you can you can see it. So you want to have a little bit there, sort of a thumb, a thumb width is about is about right. Right, okay. Let's turn that through. So there we go, there are our two baubles. So just going to give those a little rub. So there we got our two baubles. All right, now I'm going to move those out of the way and now I want to prepare the top of our bauble too because a bauble needs to have a connector and I think if you just do a circle, it's not quite so obvious what it actually is. Whereas if you do your little bauble cap, you go, oh, it's a bauble. So I'm just seeing, um, Jenny says they're gorgeous. Oh, my scissors. <laughs> right, so what we need is another piece of scrap of fabric here. So I've got one for the grey and I've got one for my red. And the, the bigger the bauble, the, the bigger the scrap. Okay, this one is about two inches by about four inches. But again, it's one of those things that you can vary it. But I'm going to fold it in half. All right. And then I'm going to take in these sides and I'm finger pressing at this point. Um, Jackie says, can you just make a slit and turn it through? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But um, I like to, if possible, reuse that little extra bit of wadding that I cut out of there. But yes, you can make a slit as well. Right, so I'm just folding this in. And the further I fold it in, the more of a point I'm going to get on my bauble top. So you can measure it as well if you want to be completely accurate, you know, at how far in you're going to measure you're going to fold but what I quite like to do is just sort of fold it into the middle at the top and then out to the points at the bottom and then if that's not straight give it a bit of a wiggle until it is so just finger press that and then turned it over and you see I've got all, again all of my raw edges are inside and when I put that on there I'm going to get my lovely bauble shape so I'm just going to pin that for a moment until I get my iron over, just to hold that. So you're only seeing the very top of it. And again, I'm over generous with this. No worries, Jackie. I'm over generous with this because we're only going to see that top edge. But as this is a curve, you want to make sure that it all tucks under. And you can make the decision when you sew it whether you just want to see the very top or whether you want to see a bit more of it. Because every time you make this, it will be completely unique and it will be just yours so let's do the same on this one so I folded that over I'm just trying to keep the angles about even on either side you can be much more precious than I'm being if you want to you can fold it in half and then you can mark the middle and then you can mark the tops and the bottoms if you so choose all right let's grab another pin hold all of that together right so now we're going to get to the iron so move my scissors out of the way see if we've got any more questions nope not at the moment 
So I'm bringing in my ironing mat and my iron. Right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is press my circle. Now I'm sort of eyeballing it to make sure that I've got no straight edges around the edge of my circle because I do want it to be nice and smooth. So we'll just give that a quick, a quick press. All right. And then I'm going to take my triangle that I finger pressed. So I'm using a wool mat here. So that makes everything, I think, a lot quicker. There we go. So there's, there's our piece and that will sit on top of it. Actually, I've got a snowflake right in the middle of that. That's rather fetching, isn't it? It looks like I did that on purpose. So I'm gonna put that to one side. Now let's get the other one. I'm just again gonna check that I've got nice even bits. I've got maybe that could benefit from a little yeah looking in here you see those snips haven't gone quite to the edge so when I turned it through that's not quite quite done so I'm just going to come back and snip a little bit closer there and there that's better I've got a nicer curve on that now okay so press that i've got my lovely bauble and then i'm going to press this one two so that's two of our baubles and in true blue peter style here's one i prepared earlier so this was a larger one so i cut this out with a six inch line on the inside you can just see here cut that out with the six inches uh janet it's up to you what size you want to do them but i cut mine that one is six inches that one is four inches and that one is three inches and then the tops of the baubles are about two and a half by about four this one for the smaller one is a little bit tinier, it's a little bit weeer. It's about two by about four. But it's like the idea is to use up sort of scraps of Christmas fabric from, from sort of projects gone by. So you want three different sizes, but, you know, you can make, I, I, I think threes is a particularly nice number. As they say, it's a magic number. So three is a good number of baubles but you could do more baubles you could just do one bauble you could do one bauble like this and then as I said at the beginning put faces on the others it's up to you so let's bring these back now I'm going to move the iron out of the way and we're going to start constructing our cushion so as I said you determined what size you're working based on what what you're making so if I was making a 12 inch cushion, uh, Sarah Reynolds, can you leave that iron on? Yes, I can actually, because look, at, uh, just have a quick look. This is actually, when I let go, it levitates. So it's no longer touching. It's got little feet on the bottom. If I let go, it lifts up. So it's not actually touching the wool mat. I have bent my wool mat, but that was with a different iron. <laughs> So, yes, it's known as the quilter's iron. But, um, right, so now I'm going to place my baubles. And as I said, the, act ba the background, it depends on what you're making. If you were making a big quilt, you just have a bigger piece. I've decided to add some wadding to mine because as I sew it down, that's actually going to quilt it at the same time. Um, my original, I haven't quilted at all. Here we go. There's my original. I've not quilted it at all and there's no interface in the back. But it really is up to you. So there's my first one. I'm going to place that sort of there. And then I'm going to put one there and one about there. All right. So what we want to do is layer these up and then pin them and then move bits out of the way. And it'll make sense why in a, in a bit. But first of all, I'm going to pin my bauble top on there. All right, and then I'm going to pin my bauble. I need more pins. Oh, 
had a magnetic thing for picking up my pins, but it's at, still at the studios. So my pins are all over the table in a mess. So I'm going to pin that there and there. So with this one, as I said, I've got my walking foot on because I'm going to quilt this at the same time. So at the moment, I'm just doing this for placement. So um, I think that's probably going to go there like that. So I'm pinning this and I'm popping some pins in here, but I'm actually going to have that peeled back so that I can sew because I want to sew from the back forwards. All right, so I'm going to pop a pin in there, which that means I can't really place this one because this needs to go over those two. But I know roughly where I want it to be. And I'm going to take my top and I'm going to put them to one side and bring the sewing machine back in. So here we go. As I said, I am currently using the um, walking foot. I'm just going to try and refocus that a bit. There we go. So bring it out a little bit so you can see more. So I've got my walking foot on and I'm doing a straight stitch and I'm actually I'm using a white and I'm using a straight stitch as I said but you could if you want to there is nothing to stop you doing a lovely blanket stitch on it because the thing is and with all of my with the book and everything it's about starting you off and then you do it the way you want to do it my book is not aimed at I am not the quilt police you know, you do not have to reproduce it. The uh, my my projects exactly as they are. The idea is that um, I'm teaching you some basic skills, and then you run with it. So if you want to do um, a decorative stitch around this, then by all means do that. So there we go. So what I'm starting, I'm starting at the top of the bauble. Uh, thank you, Monica. <laughs> so this looks amazing. I was just trying to think of something that I hadn't done before um, using a technique that I like from the book that was Christmassy and I thought you know what circles and baubles because there's a whole chapter in my book about working with circles and working with circles easily so I'm just going to come down here now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck that under and bring that back up because I'm working from white I can I with white I can get away with doing this um, I'm going to sew straight onto that circle. If I was doing a darker colour, then I would, and I would break off that thread and then reattach it. So I'm going to sew around the outside, keeping quite close to the edge. Now, the nice thing about if you have a little wobble, the chances are that the next bauble is going to cover it. All right, so we're not worrying too much. It's just about attaching it down. Because that inside, that interface that is on the inside has pulled all the raw edges in. So we don't need to worry about encasing any raw edges like you do with raw edge applique. So let's tuck those bits under. So I'm going to go back to the beginning there, do a little back stitch or a stop, stop stitch. Oh, thank you, Caroline. She says, great camera positioning, can see so much. Yeah, you're actually closer to this than I am. If I just show you, if I just show you where I, look, camera's here. I'm here. <laughs> so you're actually, you're actually closer to the action um, than I am. <laughs> so I've done a little stop stitch here so I can then bring my needle up come out, trim it, top and bottom, right, so now I'm going to come around to this one and do the same thing, I'm going to place that back, pin it, I can take those pins out there, I don't like to keep too many pins in at the same time because I am quite likely to stab myself with them, 
Right, so I'm going to peel that back to start with the bobbin top. Also, the joy of this design is it is super quick. So if you suddenly realise that you've got to make perhaps a, a very quick secret Santa, you can rustle up something like this from the scraps you've got around your sewing room in minutes. You can, of course, buy, um, buy, your, buy your fabric properly. Now, I've just seen part of a question. I can't quite reach my mouth. Just bear with me from Sue Clark. Let me just scroll down on my screen. Before finishing each bauble, could you add a bit of stuffing? You certainly could. You certainly could. That would be, that would give it sort of a trapunto look. Trapunto is a form of um, sort of quilting and, and embroidery where it's stuffed from the back. Um, and let me take the pin out. And, oh, sorry about that. That's the, that's the issue with being quite close up. It means I might nudge you with my elbow. So, let's come around the side, keep going around the outside of the circle. Take that pin out, watching the fingers. So like Sue says, sort of once we come up to the top here, we could actually leave that open, put a little bit of stuffing inside it. In fact, hang on, if I reach over, I am the queen of having stuff lying around. And look, I've got a little bit of stuffing. So why don't we try that and see what happens? Because that's the other thing about patchwork and quilting that I love. No one knows what you intended. So you can change your mind halfway through. And nobody's ever going to know that that's what you intended to do. So this is actually for another project, but I've just got a bit of stuffing. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to pop it in the middle. Thank you, Sue, for that idea. Let's pop that in there. Um, I do need to push it around a little bit. Hang on, let me grab my tweezers. I've got some nice long tweezers. Let's just smooth that out so it's nice and evenly spread inside my bauble. The other thing is you can, there are plastics that you can buy that make a crinkle noise. So you could put that in there, you know, to, for little kiddies to play with because it, when you touched it, it would make a noise. You could also, um, I've got somewhere, I've got some bell charms. You could put a bell charm in it. Wouldn't that, uh, that would just drive my cats to distraction because every time they touch the, cuff, the cushion, which they're quite liable to sleep on, but every time they touched it, the bell would ring. Right, so there we go. Backwards. Right. So, trim that. And now I'm just going to quickly place my last paw. But, oh, look at that. Isn't that cool with that little bit on there? There you go, Sue. So, yes, you can definitely do that. So now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to place him... Let's just move the sewing machine out a bit. I'm going to place him or her, I think just off, so it slightly covers both of them. Also, if I had gone off a bit on one of them, um, perhaps I've sort of had a bit of a wobble or I've had to change threads or something, um, that would be a great place to put your next bauble. But I think bought threes just looks really nice. Right, so let's pop that one in there as well. Pin that. Right, back to the sewing machine. Right, I'm just going to move you out a little bit because I keep nudging it there. Right, so... This is going inside my um, bauble, so we're not going to see. So I'm not worrying too much about the, the uh, beginning there being particularly, you know, I've not done a stop stitch or anything. You see, that's going to cover it all up, so nothing's going to come undone. So, so around the top. And then, actually, I think I'll move that up a little bit. be quite nice. I want to keep them sort of equidistant from the sides. Oh, that's because I didn't put my foot down again. 
So if you're not using wadding like this, you don't need to use your walking foot. All right, you really don't. You can do this just with a standard foot. In fact, you can do this by hand if you wanted to. Nothing to stop you using this technique. I just find it easier than needle turning or turning in with starch. And it's just absolutely perfect for circles. All right, so we're coming up to the top now. Right, so then my three baubles are finished. Right, so let's go backwards. Find my scissors. Cut my threads. All right, so there's my baubles. But now I want to attach them to the tree because at the moment they're just sort of free floating. I do like that with the padding on there. I think that's lovely. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have a bit that's attached up here. So one method that I use for marking, which requires no tools whatsoever, is my thumbnail. All right, so I'm going to draw a line with my thumbnail that is straight and I think you might just be able to see that on the black I can see it very clearly but it means I don't have to worry about chalk lines especially on black and some markers can actually leave a residue that um, never quite disappears so I've just done the marker uh, here a marker is uh, is a name for this I'm just gonna put my my stitch in the middle of my foot so that I can see it nice and clearly. A hero marker actually leaves a little line like that. Another thing you can do is soap, soap chips because when you wash it, the soap will disappear. That just means it's a piece of soap and you use that to draw your line. So there we go, there's one. So I also like to inspire beginners and not a lot of beginners don't have a huge amount of tools you just see something you think oh I fancy a go at that but you you might have a sewing machine but you might not have dissolvable markers and things like that so you can use as uh, when we did the circles we used pencil or a pen if you want to and then I'm marking with my thumb and I'm just stitching off the edge here and then I just need to mark the long one Right, so I'm going to mark that along. And you can use a ruler if you want to. And run your thumb along the ruler. So, it would help if I put my presser foot down. Back stitch. All right, so move that to one side and let's have a look at our finished quilt top or cushion top, I should say. So there we go. There's our finished cushion front. I'm just going to trim off these loose threads because I did do back stitches. If you really want to, you can sew those through, pull them through onto the back. All right, so now I'm going to prepare my cushion for completion. All right, and for that, I've got to stand up because I can't cut sitting down. So I'm going to trim this square. Now, I have got a nice big ruler at home, a big square ruler that's about 16 inches. Oh, I still can't cut over the camera. Um, but when it comes to... Oh, I've got quite a blunt blade there. When it comes to cushion fronts... Yay big is fine. All right, so I could just cut. Yeah, I need a new blade. Right, Rosemary says, love it. <laughs> Thank you. There 
we go. And then the final side. I have to get the scour out after this and clean all the wadding off. That's the thing with um, wadding and self-healing mats. The fibres get pushed into your self-healing mat because it's healing. Um, but they will come off. I use a sponge, get it wet and then just sort of do that and that will take it out. So there we go. There's my cushion pad. Next, I'm going to prepare the back. So as I said, with the 16 inch back, um, I like to do a 16 inch front. So I also like an envelope back because it's nice and easy. This is an envelope. It's an envelope. It folds over in the middle. So um, you want it to fold over by bag to third. So when you put your cushion pad in, it doesn't do that and look like a fat man at Christmas with his belly poking out. So, oh, you can see I've got thread there. So um, this means you'd have to worry about zips either if zips scare you. So um, I want to take my piece of fabric. Now this was 16 inches square. So for my outsides, I've cut it 16 inches that way. And then I've cut it 12 and a half inches this way. Okay, because that's two thirds. So if you think of it, 16 inches in half is eight. And then half of that again is four. Add them together, I've got 12. All right. So um, it's three, it's actually three quarters, not two thirds, three quarters. Anyway, I need it to overlap. So um, Sharon, it's really up to you, but I tend to go for about a third. Okay. So I have prepared one. You fold it over, fold the raw edge over once and then over again to encase it and then go to the sewing machine. So um, I can't do decorative stitches. The decorative stitch that I've already done, here's one. I did a snowflake on here, but with the walking foot, because it changes the way your fabric th feeds through your machine, it comes out, it's a bit weird, okay? So I've done this with my normal foot. So I've done one side, but you will only see one of the flaps, one of the edge of the flaps on the back. So on the other one, I'm just gonna do a straight edge and I want my stitch to be about a quarter of an inch from the edge of that so that it's going to grab everything that's not quite far enough there we go so I want it to grab both folds so again with these envelope folds there's no precise sort of measurements as long as the front and the back end at the same size and you've got a bit of an overlap so sometimes I have less of an overlap if I've got less fabric to play with right so move that out the way now let's construct our cushion so I want the front of the cushion facing upwards and then the bit of the cushion back that I'm going to see so this one with my lovely snowflakes that match the snowflake on the front that goes down first okay and this is right sides together and smooth it you can have your fold that side or that side that way it doesn't really matter and then the second piece will go on like this all right and then i'm just going to quickly pin all of those layers together just to hold them while we're going to the sewing machine. Now, another thing that I do, oh, let me grab some more pins. Oh. Another thing that I do is I want to make sure that it's all nice and secure at this intersection here, you know, where that flap is and where that flap is. And it's easy to lose track of where they are. So I pop two pins where that is because we're going to sew from the other side so I want to be able to see these and be reminded of where they are I also always pin perpendicular to my cut line so basically in layman's terms that means right angles okay so this way that means I can sew right up to it and then just flick that out and I'm in no danger of sewing over it um, if you want to sew over it you can but 
you know, every now and again, you will catch it and it will make you jump. So there we go. I flip it again. And I've got these two bits at the bottom here. With So I'm going to put two pins in there and there and two pins in here and here. All right, and now I turn it over and I'm actually going to sew from that side because if you can see, they don't, my, my outside pieces are slightly bigger. So if I did it all neatly around the outside, I'd actually miss off this top edge. So there we go. Bring the sewing machine back in and still with the walking foot, because I'm working with lots of layers. Now, I also never start or sewing on the corner. And the reason for that is if any of this drifts and I started right up here, when I come back, I can actually have a little tuck in it. And that's quite unsightly. So if we start a couple of inches down, take that pin out. When we get back to the beginning again, it'll be all lovely and neat. So I'm going to put my needle again in the middle because I like to be, if it's not a patchwork quilt, so if it's a patchwork block, so I've got points and things like that to worry about, then I'm very careful with my seam allowance because you don't want to lose the tips of your points. But if you are working with something like this where there are no points, I can be quite generous with my seam allowance. So we sew up and you see I can take that pin out as I get to it. And barely break into a sweat. Right, so I'm coming up to that first corner. Pivot. All the way around. Now we're coming up to the first place where I've got two pins. So I'm taking those two pins out and then I'm going to go backwards over that and then go forwards again. That's just going to reinforce it for when I'm pushing my cushion in because obviously you're going to pull those apart and you also need to make sure that when you're sewing it together one of the flaps hasn't moved. So let's come up to it, take that out, forwards, backwards. Right, turn it one more time. Now this is a walking foot, not a running foot. So I'm always saying to people, go nice and slow, but I'm not quilting and we have a short amount of time left together. So there's another one where I'm gonna to want to go backwards and forwards. So I just wanna get all of this done so you can see the finish. Item. You can be a lot slower than me if you want to. Now, when we come up to this, this is where we started. You see that top edge isn't connected. That means that I can smooth that out and I'm going to end up with no puckers around the outside. Now, if you were selling this cushion, um, I would then go round this with an overcasting foot to neaten off all these edges. I would trim it and then I would overcast it. And I probably would have put a backing on the inside if I was using wadding like this. You know, if you're gonna sell this on. Let's move that out of the way because we always want those nice and neat. So I'm just very quickly going to take off that excess. I definitely need a new blade. I think I've run over a pin somewhere along the line. Right, so next we're going to turn it through. And when I learned, I was told to trim off these corners. But a very nice lady at the Festival of Quilts told me not to do that. She said she was a, a couturier and they never did that because it weakened it. So what you do is you put your thumb right into the corner. You fold that seam, that sewn line over and then you fold it again. So you're actually making a little square, all right? Now hold on to it with your other finger and you turn it through and what you'll actually get is a nice square 
in that corner like that. Okay, so let me show you again. Finger into the corner. Also, this is black thread, so sorry, black fabric. When I'm sewing around the outside, you would use a black thread and a black bobbin thread, um, but I haven't got time to re-thread, so I've used white. So again, finger in, or thumb, right into that corner, fold it, fold it to create a square. That means we don't have to trim it, but also that square then pushes right into that corner and reinforces that corner. So you might want to take a little bit of the bulk away, but not certainly not as much as I would previously have done. And there we go. Let's fold this one as well and this one. Ah, oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sharon. I'm full of them. <laughs> oh, try not to knock my pins everywhere. Give that a shake. And now this requires a press. I rather like it with the little bit of wadding in it. We could have, we could have um, chosen to quilt this as well because I put the stuff on the back. So let's, if we just, I'm just going to move this camera out of the way now so you can see a bit better. So here we go. This is the finished cushion. Now, finally, the other thing I do is I would press the back and the front, but I don't press up to these edges. All right, because at the moment they want to fold in on themselves. So what and if you press them and you don't push everything out, all of these edges, you'll actually press a crease into it. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Let me just bring you in to show you that corner again. Hold on. Let's just put that there and then we do that. There we go. So you've got those lovely corners. But you see, this is actually folding in a little bit. And if you press that, you'll press that into there as a permanent tuck. So I would press the front and the back and I would press up to the edges like this. And then I put a cushion in it and then I bounce up and down on it a bit. And what that does is that will then pull that so that you're not you've not got um, that crease reinforced in there. So there we go. Move that again. Here's our finished bauble cushion. So I did that from beginning to end in an hour, except I had prepped the back and I had prepped one of these pieces. But you can see it's a really simple way to, to work. Um, it's great fun. I hope you guys will have a go making, I, I, I hope to see the, 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 the world of Facebook awash with bauble cushions this Christmas with lots of different fabrics. You could use fabrics that have got designs on them that are Christmas. Um, you can put, uh, if you can print onto fabric, there's fabric out there you can print onto. You could do, you know, a cat one. So I would have pictures of my cats in between. Um, you can quilt them, you can practice your free motion. You could do green as a background so you can pretend it's a tree like my one here. You know, you really can have lots of fun with it. So that technique is one of the techniques um, that is featured in my book, Sarah Payne's um, Quilt School. I've done, starts off with squares, we do triangles, then we do circles. So there's lots of information in there. Um, I hope you, if you've got it, thank you so much because it was uh, nominated for the British Sewing Awards as favourite book of 2019 slash 2020. So we're just waiting. But um, that's because uh, people like you uh, nominated it and voted for it. So thank you so much. And thank you so much again to Search Press for inviting me to come along on Sunday afternoon and show you how to make yourself a little bauble cushion. So, oh, and Search Press says, don't forget you can purchase Sarah's book with 20% off. Mm, I like a discount. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival because there's still lots to come. I've been trawling through. There is so much uh, competitions. Um, videos, go lives, and uh, there's still more to come. So do please enjoy the rest of your day and um, keep commenting. You can follow me over on Sarah Payne Quilter. I'm on Facebook and you'll find me on Instagram under says Payne. Um, and then I look forward to seeing lots of your finished products. So projects. So make sure you if you post them, uh, you can either post them on my page or the search press and either way tag both of us because we always love to see what people have been up to with our ideas. Um, oh, thank you, Maggie. That's really sweet of you to say so. So um, I'm going to love you and leave you now for the rest of your Sunday. So thank you again for joining me. 
and I will see you soon, hopefully, and um, enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon. Bye-bye.